You're listening to Neo Cash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. On this bonus interview episode of Neo Cash Radio, we talk with Dr. Julian Haas about 10X and come in. 10X is building a multi blockchain debit card and mobile wallet that currently works with Bitcoin Dash, Ether, and ERC20 tokens. Commit is a cryptographically secure off chain multi asset instant transaction network that leverages hashed time lock contracts, payment channels, channels, and liquidity providers to create a decentralized network of cross-chain asset conversion. The 10X roadmap features commit integration within a couple years. On June 24th, 10X will be having an initial token sale where 51% of the pay tokens will be sold to the public at a rate of 350 pay tokens per 1S with a cap of 200,000 Ether. The initial token sale will last four weeks or until the cap is reached. Dr. Julian uh, Haas, please, uh, thank you so much for joining us here on New Cash Radio. It's such a pleasure to be on. Excellent. Um, so uh, could you tell our listeners just a little bit about yourself before we get started and uh, just give them some background, basically? Sure. Um, my background is completely non-tech. It's very diverse. I was a professional kite surfer for 10 years. I'm from Austria originally. And then I said, okay, I need to do something serious with my life. And I started studying medicine. So I studied medicine, became a medical doctor. I worked as a surgeon for one and a half years. And then in 2011, a patient of mine that I became very good friends with afterwards that we had just done heel surgery on, he was smiling when he came back. And it's very unusual because a heel surgery is not a a good surgery. And um, he came in and I was like, wow, you're doing well, Martin. And he said, no, my heel is terrible, but I just made so much money investing. I said, really? In what do you invest? And he said, well, I invest in this thing called Bitcoin. You should totally check it out. You're so open-minded anyways. So that was in 2011. Bitcoin had just hit a dollar. And that kind of sparked my interest for this, yeah, really kind of interesting thing. In 2012, I quit my medical career. I moved to Hong Kong, to Asia. And that's when my entrepreneurial site came in. And in end of 2014, beginning of 2015, together with three other co-founders, we started 10X here in Singapore. That's where we're located now. Excellent. So getting right into 10X now, this has been going on, as you said, it's, it's been going on, what, two years now? Or is it going on three? No, exactly two. We had our anniversary June 11th, uh, so three, three days ago from the recording. <laughs> that's, like, that's like 10 years in crypto time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's so fast. Yeah. Um, so, so 10X is, is it, from the beginning, you were focused on a Bitcoin debit card. Is that right? Correct. So at the beginning, the company was called One Bit. Um, my biggest concern was always that Bitcoin is not usable. It's just people invest, but no one uses it. So I said, "Hey, Toby, my co-founder Toby, we need to be able to use those things if we if we really want to have an impact." And so that's how One Bit got started two years ago, um, and it was mainly focused on the Bitcoin debit card. Right. And, and I mean, times have changed drastically in the space of two years and Bitcoin, I mean, it was so dominant two years ago. And, and now it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's really a free market now. There's a lot more things going on. And the card, your, your, when did you make the choice to add additional currencies? I mean, when, what was sort of the, the process in which 10X decided, okay, we have to go beyond Bitcoin? So when I... I really got involved in Bitcoin in 2014, and that was really when the massive crash was all the way down from uh, a bit over a thousand dollars, and and suddenly other currencies and their mainly Ethereum started to become with new concepts, new ideas, and so 2015 we were just kind of watching, and in 2016 I felt the market share of Bitcoin was really dropping, and so beginning 2016 already I said, hey Toby, if we focus on Bitcoin all the time, I'm not sure if this is the right thing. And he said, well, I'm not sure how we're going to implement all those other currencies. Technically, it's going to be so difficult. We're going to be such a center of attack if we have to implement every single currency by itself. So we were looking for these solutions. And then on on the one hand, so this is when Comet started to come out. And on the other hand, it was when we said, okay, let's stop thinking one bit at a time. We need to 10x our thinking. We need to 10x our growth. And so that's how we had this rebranding from one bit um, that initially was for Bitcoin. But then it was like, okay, let's stop thinking one bit at a time. We need to think bigger. Uh, to over to 10x. Wow, that's that's great. Um, and so now, not only is Ethereum uh, also available on the 10x uh, platform or card, uh, but your 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 uh, the tokens, which are huge. Obviously, the token sales are are a big thing right now. But also Dash, and and Dash is sort of like the dark horse of crypto in a way. Um, so it's always it's good to see that included. It's very stable. That's that's one thing about Dash compared to a lot of other things. Um, 
But so so going forward, you're looking at the next evolution of 10x and, and bringing the product to uh, to more people, and you have a token sale coming up. And so I mentioned the token sale details. It's it's, it's on the 24th. Can you uh, just reiterate for uh, briefly what the token sale uh, details are? Sure. Um, so basically, on our token sale, we are selling 0.5% of our revenues, of the entire revenue that people spend through the 10x card. Or whatever they buy with the card, you get 0.5%. It gets spread over all the tokens. Um, there's a mathematical maximum amount of tokens of 165 million. Um, we only issue tokens that are actually being bought. So we don't burn any tokens or we don't throw any tokens away or we don't refund any tokens to the company. So we only issue the tokens when a, a token is bought. Since we are selling 200,000 uh, worth of Ethereum as a hard cap, so it can never go over, there's a mathematical maximum um, from that. Um, uh, uh, one Ether gives people 350 tokens. If they buy the tokens in the first 24 hours, they get a 20% bonus. So they would be getting 420 um, pay tokens. So it's around, if you look at the Ether, the, how it's fluctuating, um, a dollar a token at yeah, around. No. I, yeah, that's that seems uh, reason, reasonable. I mean, there's been a lot of token sales, and and just bringing up the the Bancor one because of the historic ramifications, sort of. I mean, in a way of that the that recent sale. Um, I think originally, and, and may, I think maybe you corrected me on this when we reported on it in our our previous episode of New Cash Radio. But the the uh, one hour minimum was that something you guys were throwing around? Or was that uh, something you scrapped? So we had initially we had a hundred thousand ether hard, uh, soft cap, and if that was hit, we would leave it open for another twenty four hours. So it was actually worse than you described it in the in uh, in the in your show, and that's when I reached out as well. Um, and that's why we decided, okay, we're not going to do this because this can go so haywire, this can be so crazy. And right. honest, honestly, for us, we have a very clear idea what we're going to do with the funds. So if we get let's say four hundred thousand ether in, well. At this stage, we don't need 400,000 Ether. So we wanted to budget what we truly needed, and we budget that, and it's 200,000 Ether. Yes, with the with the Ether price fluctuating a bit, it might be a bit more, might be a bit less, but we don't necessarily think that it's going to have such a big impact, especially in regards to Comet, where we really need liquidity for Comet, which is going to stay in crypto anyways. So it doesn't right. really matter what Ether does to the dollar. It's really, it, it is crypto, and it stays in crypto. Now, this comet, uh, we're, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But uh, part of part of what you're doing with the token sale is you're you're gathering that liquidity, as you said, and you're putting a certain amount in into this reserve that that allows for some of these exchanges to happen through the the comet uh, eventually. Is that going to happen initially as well? Um, so we not we don't have comet life right now. So that's going to happen probably by the year end. This is when we're going to start. We have a, a test version for Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum. Um, we have done some basic transactions, um, but this is not relevant yet. Um, okay. We just wanted to be sure that what we actually stipulated in the white paper last year that this actually works, and so it does. And so it's not we don't need any liquidity right now. But this is going to ha- happen in the next let's say three to four to five months. There we really need this liquidity. Okay, let's quick talk about the cards because this is important. Um, the cards right now you're not marketing to U.S. customers because obviously the United States is terrible when it comes to new technology for whatever reason. Um, but the, where are the cards available? Uh, like either right now or in the near future. So right now we're recording June 14th. It's only available for Singaporeans, um, but they can use it in the entire world. Now in five days, um, so on the 19th. Actually, a bit early already, I think on Monday, which should be the 18th or 19th, doesn't matter. Um, that's when you can order these cards globally, except for, as you mentioned correctly, in the U.S. Um, we ship them out. Um, we, If you just want the virtual card, you can have that. It's $1.50 U.S. And if you want to have the physical card, we charge $15, including handling and shipping. Um, we don't have any okay. FX fees. We don't charge any so, transaction fees because uh, we get the kickback you, you, I, I from MasterCard. And we also partner with Visa, here, actually. So um, we're going to get it from them as well. You there um, still? Sorry? Okay, I'm sorry. You, you, I, I lost your signal, but uh, fortunately, we'll get uh, what you were saying recorded. Um, so the, the cards are, are basically, you know, very soon they're, they're available, is what you're saying. It was in five, five days or so. Correct. Okay. And um, so... The next step, uh, the wallet. You have the wallet app for Android right now. Is that correct? 
Correct. Um, we should get the iOS version in July latest. Um, and also we're going to have a web app version. Okay, excellent. And a web app version. Excellent. Um, so the the cards that the they have an incentive you mentioned something about the uh the person using the card having a certain percentage of that um purchase uh reimbursed to them in pay tokens is that right correct 0.1 percent um we're gonna buy that on the open market um and we also have that's also important to mention 29 percent. so we're selling as you mentioned 51 percent right now 29 percent are gonna stay in a smart contract they're gonna be released on a quarterly basis and these pay tokens will also be used to, um, first of all, make promotions for customers, but also to reimburse those 0.1% for customers. Once they are left out, we need to buy the pay tokens on the open market, uh, which is going to have a really, really great effect on the price, actually. Sure, yeah, I, I could see that. Now, you, you're, there was a, uh, I don't know if it's still live right now, but you had a pre-sale going on. Uh, can you talk to me a little bit about that? So right now this pre-sale is going on. Um, it's a minimum of 125 Ether or equivalent in Bitcoin. We're only going to accept Ether and Bitcoin in the pre-sale. We accept, we're going to accept a lot, a lot of currencies during the regular sale. Um, the pre-sale has the major advantage that you're going to have a confirmed slot. So if you are listening to this and you want to be part of it, you need to send me a personal email. You need to send to julian at 10x.tech. And um, I will see if there's still space because we're going to cap it at 100,000 Ether. Right now, at the time of recording, we're at 80, 85,000 um, Ether. So there's still a little bit of, 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 of space left. Okay. And now does that, is that subtracted from the 200,000 cap? Correct. The, okay. So, so you're saying that when the token sale on June 24th happens, that only 100,000 worth of S will be collected or, or capped out? Okay, correct. Or let's say we don't hit 100,000 in the pre-sale, which I don't think, but let's, I, I just want to be really clear. Let's say we right. only hit 90,000, then in the, pre, in the regular sale, we're going to have 110,000, whatever is the remainder to the 200,000. Excellent. So this, I mean, in a way, this is giving, um, you know, people a chance to invest. I mean, because let's face it, the, the, recent, uh, the recent token sales have basically been uh, a couple of massive transactions that have, have eaten up most of the available tokens. And this really, really elbows out a lot of people from, from participating. Um, so you're kind of solving that ahead of time by giving people slots now. Is that, is that kind of what's going on with the presale? Correct. Okay. Wow. That's, that's a different way of handling. Cool. Uh, it's a lot so of work. I have to say it's a lot of work. I get around 400 emails a day and wow. I have to handle all that. But I, I, the feedback we're getting from our contributors is amazing. They're like, wow, this is the best token sale they've ever been part of. It's so well structured. And, you know, it, and, and, and also the great thing is the users who don't have the 125 Ether, they feel a lot like better because they know, okay, on June 24th, probably not someone is going to come in with millions of dollars and is going to put in thousands of dollars off gas and then snatches everything because these people were already part of our presale, right? So it's really, uh, they, right. it's, it's, it looks very, very structured. Excellent. So let's talk about Comet right now. And, and this, uh, wow. I mean, the, the, now, I mean, the, the card and the wallet and, and just being able to use tokens and stuff, that's, that's awesome. That's amazing. And I think that'll really open up a lot of possibilities for uh, extending the, the usefulness of some of these, these tokens and coins and such. But Comet, I mean, this, this is a way to really connect a lot of blockchains together. This, this sounds like a really fascinating idea. Can you, can you tell me a little bit more about that? Oh, definitely. Um, so last year when we had this thing, okay, we need to connect more assets to our card. We had this thing, okay, if we do this all one by one, it's going to, first of all, take a lot of work and it's going to be very centralized. So we need to kind of have a decentralized way. And there were basically only two options. Either you create a new blockchain and you make all the other blockchains connect to your blockchain, or you find a solution that doesn't require a blockchain. Um, if we look at the internet today, the internet is basically nothing else than a network of intranets and it's connected through protocols. There is no large one chain internet that everyone connects to. Everyone connects to their local provider who is connected to someone else. So it's, it's basically blockchains being connected by a protocol. Um, so when we looked at this, we said, okay, it's going to be harder to make something without a new blockchain because you really have to connect those things. But hey, if we can make these blockchains be connected, that would be really revolutionary. I mean, this would be really exciting. 
And so that's basically how we said, okay, we need to connect these blockchains. And then we were looking at, okay, so what would be basic building blocks, how we could connect such blockchains? Like what would be required? And we realized that actually the most fundamental building blocks are integrated in most blockchains anyways. It's on the other hand, multi-sig, so you need multi-signature accounts, you need time locks, and you need a hashing function. Because if you have those three, multi-sigs and hash time locks, then you can literally communicate be between those uh, two blockchains. And there's one requirement that's additional, but it, it's not a technical requirement. It's you need the liquidity on both sides. And so that's sure. why at the beginning, we're going to become a major liquidity provider where we are hoping that along the line, more and more people will step up and also say, hey, I could also provide this liquidity because I can become like an exchange and I can make a small cut. Sure. Oh yeah, that that I mean that's that's really interesting right there. And not only that, but I mean for some of these these services and, and especially all the blockchain as a service type things going on, that uh, being a, a connected to this might open up more doors for them and, and might make some additional revenue. I mean, it sounds like it sounds like a really big job though. I mean, what's you know what's some of the the, uh, the you're saying it's it's at least a year off uh, if if you get total funding. In, in your white paper draft, uh, which is obviously subject to change and, and stuff like that, and mileage may vary, but you're 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 saying that if you get full funding, that it it could be as early as 2018. Is that is that right? I think we could have a version live in 2017. I mean, we're not that far away. Um, the basic version of Comet is not as complicated as it sounds at the beginning. So if I just have a, a, a small route that I let's say. Let's say you own Bitcoin and you want to spend Dash, but you don't want to own any Dash. Then with Comet, this is quite straightforward. So you, you basically, you just need to find someone who's willing to spend a Dash for you. You open uh, a multi-signature account. You tell them, hey, I'm going to give you this amount of Bitcoin. If you spend a Dash for me, here's my hash. If you return the hash to me, you're actually going to get the Bitcoin because it means that you also spend the Dash. So it's basically nothing else than you passing it to someone if that person passes it onwards. It's a very simple kind of concept. Um, the major challenge, and I don't think we're going to solve that challenge this year. Um, I just had a meeting with Lightning Network in San Francisco with Max Fang, um, at, who is also running the Blockchain Institute in, in Berkeley University. And I said, the major challenge that we're going to face, and this is something we don't have a clear answer yet for, but no one does. Um, it's, it's, I think, also something that's going to get solved along the line, is the routing. So what if I just say I have Bitcoin and I want to spend Dash? Um, but there's probably a hundred or a thousand different possibilities of how my Bitcoin can be spent in Dash. Because there might not only be you, but there might be Susie and there might be Bob and there might be Jeff. So there's a lot of a lot of possibilities in how this routing would work. And you don't necessarily have to find the best way. You need to just find a good way or an optimal way. And that routing is where we're working on right now a lot, where we have some really smart people looking into structuring that. So that's going to be the, from a technical standpoint, that's going to be the, the, the major key. Are we going to have a perfect solution this year? I don't think so. We're going to have a solution, um, but I'm definitely going to think that we're going to improve it over the next years. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, I, I can't even fathom, I'm not a coder myself, so I can't fathom what actually goes into making some of these things happen. But there's, a, there's one part of the commit that I, I wanted to talk about and, uh, and just see what the solution is. Now, I, I, I read the white paper, I at least glossed over it as, as well as I can, but the off-chain off portion of the, uh, the uh, com comment, uh, what, where are these off-chain things being, uh, uh, basically, uh, are, they, are they handled on nodes? Are they, are they processed? Uh, how, are they, how are they handled off-chain? I'm just curious if you can sure. uh, really explain that for our listeners. Sure. So basically what happens is, let's say you have the Bitcoin blockchain, and then you just get, you go off chain. So you go into so-called state channels. It's something that also Lightning Network is exploring, or if you know the Raiden Network on Ethereum, sure. they do these they do this on the chain, even though they go off the chain, but they don't do it cross chain. That's the, the really key part. Basically how it works is, I put, let's say I put a, a Bitcoin into this channel and you put two Bitcoins into this channel. So we have two states that we agree on. So it's just the two of us. And we say, okay, I have a Bitcoin and you have two Bitcoin in. And let's say tomorrow I say, hey, you owe me a Bitcoin. Can you please send me a Bitcoin? Well, you send me this Bitcoin and the only two parties who basically agreed on this is you and me. So we don't broadcast that to the rest of the blockchain. It's just the two of us. So we can do this instantly. 
because I can send you a half a Bitcoin back and it's just the two of us. There's no one else. The important thing, if one of us tries to cheat, he or she loses everything and the last state just gets broadcasted to the network so I don't have risk that you can actually cheat me over because if you do, you have a lot to lose and nothing to gain. Right. Um, and and th this concept is being used by or, or used at the moment. I'm not aware of anyone using it, but the concept works. Um, Lightning Network is researching on it. Rain Network is uh, researching on it. So it's, 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 it's something that's used. But you could do the same thing over via, via cross-chain. So you could just do this cross-chain. The advantage of it is that it's instant. So you don't have to wait for the transaction to settle because you don't need the block confirmation. Wow. So... Um Basically, uh, this is this is some really fascinating uh, future future tech stuff going on here, and I, I'm really glad to have this moment to talk to you. And as I said, I wanted to just try to keep this as a primer and and sort of cover some of the the details. Um, and hopefully, maybe we can continue this conversation in the future, depending on time and interest. But uh, where where can people find out more about this sort of thing? Um, basically, two things. Our company, um, 10x.tech, where it's our mission to make any blockchain asset spendable. And then, of course, Comet.network, where we, this is an open source. Uh, it runs under the MIT um, license, so it's, everyone can contribute. Um, of course, we're 10x right now. We make the largest contributions. But we do have already people who are not part of 10x who are looking into it, giving us insight and so on. Um, and, uh, yeah, this is basically where we're connecting blockchains without needing a new blockchain. Excellent. And if people, uh, I'm going to try to get this out as soon as possible, but if people want to get involved with the pre-sale, they should send you an email at what address? Julian is my first name, Julian, at 10x.tech. Um, if you go into our Slack channel or you go into our website, you will also find this information for the pre-sale. Excellent. So uh, thank you so much for joining us, Julian. I really appreciate the conversation, and I look forward to seeing what happens with your token sale as well as uh, the future of both 10x and Comet. Comet. It was a pleasure. NeoCashRadio.com.